Well, hey there, boys and girls. Welcome back from the long break. It's time for a little bit more flip class. We're doing a little differently today with a little bit different angle. So make sure at the end of the video, there should be an annotation pop-up or some way to measure some feedback. So tell me, do you like the new angle? Do you like the old angle better? Let me know. I can do videos either way. Hopefully, I'm actually in the picture. Uh, I thought I set it up right. Today we're going to talk about uh, DNA, this, this beautiful baby right here. But we're really going to get into all the processes behind the DNA that are important for this class. But for today's video, we're just going to focus on the structure of DNA. Then you'll come into class, you're going to make some DNA. So let's get on into it. Alright, so DNA has what we call a nucleotide structure. All right. Every DNA is made up of these different nucleotides. These nucleotides go into really, really long chains, and we can measure them by how many nucleotides are in the chain. So you can see here, uh, every nucleotide has three main parts. You've got some kind of sugar. It's a five carbon sugar. It's either going to be deoxyribose in the case of DNA, or ribose in the case of RNA. The main difference there is the deoxy has one less oxygen on it, right? Uh, well, yeah, you know, maybe you can see that. Always has a phosphate group at PO4 and some kind of nitrogen base. Now there's four main nitrogen bases and it could be any one of the four. Each nucleotide has these three components. So when you're making your nucleotides in class, you're going to be cutting out a crap ton of sugar, crap ton of phosphates, and a crap ton of nitrogen bases. Then you're going to assemble me some nucleotides. Then you're going to make me a little bit of DNA. Here is a picture of a one nucleotide. As you can see, they arrange themselves like this. The sugar always goes in the middle. It's sort of the, uh, the bonding agent that connects the nitrogen base and the phosphate group to each other. Nitrogen bases, like I said, there's four of them. There's adenine, there's also thymine, there's cytosine, and guanine. Now thymine, don't be scared if you see it spelled with a Y or an IA, I've seen it either way. In RNA, because it's a little bit different molecule, it's only single-stranded, not double-stranded, there's no thymine. Instead, you have this chemical uracil, which is very, very similar. As you can see, it looks a lot like thymine, thymine uracil, but uh, yeah, in RNA, you get uracil, DNA, you get thymine, so if I give you a sequence, they always name them by the bases because those are the things that are different. So if you saw a big long line of code and you saw a bunch of U's in there, you should know you're looking at RNA instead of DNA because of the U for uracil. So here's a picture of DNA as you can see over here on uh, my right side maybe. Uh, you've got your nucleotides lined up here. Here is one nucleotide. See that DNA is just a double chain of nucleotides. The nitrogen bases go down the middle, and the sugar phosphate, they alternate making this sort of backbone. So you got like sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate. Just like you see here, you got sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate. Sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate. That makes the backbone. The middle part, that's the code. Those bases, they act sort of like a Morse code or like, you know, a, like a Legends, like on the back of your cereal box with your little decoder ring. These are the instructions for what your cells are going to do in that code. Again, you notice that there's some pairing rules. Adenine always goes with thymine. That's just how it is. They're always together. That's how it is. It never cheats on T with a C or a G. Ah, 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 ah. A and T are meant to be together. It's destiny, children. And just like adenine and thymine always go together, G and C, the guanine and the cytosine are always together. If there's a C, there's going to be a G with it. If there's a G, there's going to be a C with it. And that's just always how it is. The way the molecules are shaped, they can only bond with that specific base. How do they bond? Well, they actually make in the middle, they make these very, very weak little hydrogen bonds here that connect the two together. Remember, that's not really a bond, just some weird interaction. Over here on the other side, you can see we zoom in. Well, it's behind me now, that's awkward. And the part that's behind me that you're going to see off to the side, you can actually see that you've got your phosphate groups, your five carbon sugar, they link up to the base. The other side is actually upside down like they're showing here, that way the bases can link up because the bases are always attached to the sugar. So you're going to make me some delicious DNA, and then we're going to do a little bit about it. Right, so just as a point of clarification, remember the DNA is normally all coiled up in that chromatin. When it's coiled up that way, 
It's actually wrapped it around. We've talked about histones and nucleosomes and stuff like that. So actually it's wound up really tightly. The DNA structure that you just look like is how DNA would look like if it was unwound, which is how it needs to be if we're going to use it to do anything. The DNA you're making in class is going to be unwound so we can use it to do things. It'll curl up very, very tightly around the histones, and eventually, after the S phase, which is what's coming next in DNA replication, we'll get the two separate chromatids when it's all coiled up. So remember the meiosis square dance, coil up, coil up, coil up now? That was that. This is a closer up look, and you can actually see uh, you've got the DNA, and they've got these uh, nucleosomes, and then they're wrapped around these big sphere-like histones, sort of like a spool for your thread. So this is how it gets really wound up really nicely and tightly, and it makes like these beads on string sort of thing. That's the end of the video. Remember, you're going to make all your nucleotides first, then combine them in the double-chained DNA. Don't forget the noodle, and tell me, you know, How'd you like this format compared to the other format? Ignore the fact that it's shorter. I could make longer videos like this too. Just focus on the format there, children. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to murder.